now going to be going over problem number 27 from the sprint round. So problem number 27 reads, Matthew is taking a difficult math test with six problems. He has a one half chance of getting full credit on question one, a one third chance of getting full credit on each of questions two, three, and four, and a one fourth chance of getting full credit on each of questions five and six. How many times as likely is it that Matthew gets full credit on exactly five questions as it is that he gets full credit for all six questions? Now, because of the differing probabilities of him getting each math problem right, and because of uh, the number of cases that we have to calculate, it seems like trying to find the probability of Matthew getting full credit on all six questions and the numerical probability of him getting credit on all five, on exactly five questions, uh, it seems like it's going to be way too much work, especially since we want to save time. Uh, however, we don't have to find the numerical probability of Matthew getting full credit for all six questions or for exactly five questions. We just need to find how many times more likely it is for him to get exactly five questions right than it is for him to get all six questions right. So let's go ahead and define a variable. Let's say that P is the probability that Matthew answers all six questions correctly. Then in terms of P, what is the probability that Matthew doesn't get question one correct, but gets all of the other questions correct? Well, since question one is a one half chance of getting it right or getting it wrong, then we actually have the same probability that he will get all six questions correct as the probability that he will get uh, questions two through six correct and question one incorrect. So the probability of him getting question one wrong is P. Now let's say, what's the prob probability that he gets question two incorrect? question three incorrect or question four incorrect. We can group these all into one case because he has the same probability of getting full credit or not getting full credit on these three questions. It's a one third chance of full credit on each one. Again, we're gonna to wanna to express this in terms of P. Uh, as we know in P, uh, he satisfied that one third chance of getting questions two, three, and four correct, one third each. So if we were to pick exactly one and say that he didn't get it correct, well, he had a two-thirds chance of getting it of getting that question incorrect. So it's twice as likely. Uh, so in this case, if we were to swap question two, question three, or question four from correct to incorrect, the probability would go from P to two times P. Similarly, with questions five and six, Matthew had a one-fourth chance of getting each one correct. If we were to swap one of them and say that he got exactly one of them incorrect, then the probability would go for a change from a one-fourth chance of getting that question correct to a three-fourths chance of getting that question incorrect, increasing the probability by a factor of three, so 3p. So now we have the increase in probability that Matthew gets five questions correct and one question incorrect over uh, the probability of him getting all six questions correct. So all we need to do is combine these since they're already in terms of P to see how many times likely, more likely Matthew is to get exactly five questions correct and one question incorrect than he is to get six questions correct. So P plus three times two P, because remember this is three cases. It's the case for question two, for question three, and for question four, plus two times three P equals one plus six plus six, so 13 P. So Matthew is 13 times more likely to get full credit on exactly five questions than he is to get full credit for all six questions. So our answer is 13, which was D on our test. And we're done. Thank you for listening. Hey, this is Tim. Hope you're enjoying our videos. If so, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that sort of thing. But what I'd really want to invite you to do is to send us an email at media at mathleague.org. Tell us which problems you'd like to see us cover next in our video series. Take care and see you in the next video.